Mr. Speaker, for purposes of debate only, I yield the customary 30 minutes to the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. McGovern, pending which I yield myself such time as I may consume. During consideration of this resolution, all time yielded is for the purposes of debate only. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on the House, on House resolution currently under consideration. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to bring this rule forward today on behalf of the Rules Committee. The rule provides for consideration of H.R. 5046, the Comprehensive Opioid Abuse Reduction Act of 2016, and H.R. 4641, a bill to establish an interagency task force to review, modify, and update best practices for pain management and prescribing pain medication. For H.R. 5046, the rule provides for one hour of debate, equally divided and controlled by the ranking a chairman and ranking member of the Judiciary Committee, and for H.R. 4641, the rule provides for one hour of debate equally divided and controlled by the chairman and ranking member of the Energy and Commerce Committee. Both rules are structured rules that make in order numerous amendments. Yesterday, the Rules Committee received testimony from members of the Judiciary Committee, the Energy and Commerce Committee, and multiple other members on their amendments. H.R. 5046 was marked up by the Judiciary Committee, and H.R. 4641 was reported by the Energy and Commerce Committee. Both bills have broad bipartisan support. These bills are part of the House's effort to combat our nation's growing opioid epidemic. They reflect a commitment to address this devastating problem in a constructive and meaningful way. Opioid abuse hits communities all across this country, rich and poor, rural, suburban, and urban, and it takes a major toll. In 2012, an estimated 2.1 million in the United States were suffering from substance abuse disorders related to prescription opioid pain relievers. An estimated 467,000 people were addicted to heroin. In the same year in Georgia, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation found that prescription drugs played a role in 592 deaths in 152 of 159 counties for which autopsies were performed. And Mr. Speaker, just the other day I was having a coffee with a dear friend of mine who I've known for 20 years. And as we were talking and I mentioned what we were doing here, he brought forth that just in the last little bit in his own family life that he has seen areas of relatives that have been touched by this uh, epidemic of painkillers and those substance abuse issues. This is something that can affect anyone in any family, and this is why we are here today. The bills before us today take steps to combat the opioid epidemic and drug addiction. H.R. 5046, introduced by Mr. Sensenbrenner from Wisconsin, establishes a comprehensive opioid abuse grant program. The program encompasses new and existing Department of Justice programs, including training for first responders, law enforcement, drug courts, residential substance abuse treatment, and criminal investigations for the unlawful distribution of opioids. Importantly, this bill provides flexibility to state to, for the states to use the funds where they are needed most. It does so by establishing one grant program that has numerous allowable uses. The bill also ensures that there isn't duplication and eliminates redundancy. I was proud to support this bill at the Judiciary Committee. H.R. 4641, introduced by Congresswoman Susan Brooks of Indiana, establishes a pain management best practices interagency task force. This task force will include representatives from federal agencies, state medical boards, health care professionals, experts from addiction, addiction recovery communities, and others knowledgeable in the field. The task force will be responsible for reviewing and updating best practices for acute and chronic pain management in an evidence-based manner. It will also be responsible for sharing the information found with health care professionals. This bill recognizes that responses to the opioid epidemic need to be coordinated and thoughtful. Addiction is happening far too often with devastating consequences. Further, it is shown that prescription opioid abuse often leads to heroin abuse. And my sheriffs in my part of my state can attest to this every day compounding this problem. In fact, according to the Centers for Disease Control, 45% of people who used heroin were addicted to prescription opioid painkillers. Heroin is, has frequently been thought of as an inner city problem, but we're starting to see it more and more outside of cities and spreading to rural areas too. This problem is a problem for America. This problem has exploded. According to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, heroin deaths have increased in Georgia by 300%. That's an astonishing and very tragic statistic. CDC statistics on opioid abuse show 18,893 overdose deaths related to prescription pain relievers, 10,574 overdose deaths related to heroin in 2014. Staggering numbers. The opioid, opioid epidemic affects everyone, and I believe that most people could tell you a family member or friend who has suffered in some way because of this problem. 
But also, Mr. Speaker, it affects babies who are born addicted to opioids and other drugs. These children, through no fault of their own, are born with a serious and heartbreaking problem. They go, then go through dangerous withdrawals and can be left with lasting health consequences. We have to find a way to stop this. The opioid epidemic affects veterans whose battle scars are treated by a VA whose answer too often is to prescribe high quantities of opioids with little thought to the consequences. I'm a chaplain in the United States Air Force Reserve. I served in Iraq. I saw firsthand the scars that the battlefield can leave, both physical and mental. We need to support our, a support system for our veterans. We need to address their pain, and we need to ensure that they have the avenue to get the help they need. I believe these bills, the bills that this rule provides for, will take the steps to make that happen. Our veterans deserve our very best. Addiction issues are often related to other concurring disorders, including mental health issues. Addiction claims victims, and addiction is a disease. We must not turn a blind eye to those in need. We must work to halt the opioid epidemic, and we must act to prevent more deaths and to stop the growth and spread of the problem. Today's bills are a step toward doing that, and I'm glad that we have the opportunity to discuss those in an open manner. These bills are brought forward due to the hard work of many members. In particular, I would like to thank Chairman Goodlatte and Upton, Ranking Members Conyers and Pallone, Congresswoman Brooks and Congressman Sensenbrenner, and their staffs for the work bringing these important reforms together. These reforms are a step in the right direction. And at this time, I'll reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Georgia reserves.